Sean Murphy and Dave Stewart reveal Derek Power's plans as the new Robin begins looking into the mysterious death of Warren McGuinness and Bruce Wayne returns home to gather weapons for a coming war. Sean Murphy continues his refreshing and fun spin on the Batman Beyond era with another issue that cracks open a lot of the running plots of this series, specifically Derek Power's plot for the big bat themed army he has and that he wishes to sell off to the highest bidder. One thing that kind of piqued my interest about this plot was the way he revealed it, in that he mentioned an impending invasion. However, I don't think it was from another nation being that is that he wants to sell this tech to other countries. So so I have a feeling he means maybe an alien invasion, which would be really interesting since up until now the series has been more or less grounded and kind of based in realism in some points, with no aliens or magic or time travel or space related stuff happening, but really it's kind of the only way to take the story now since we haven't had that. So I'd be intrigued to see if that's the way the story is going to be going now and we get some alien invaders or something like that. I really like that we also got a big chunk of Terry this issue. We really haven't had much of him since he's been kind of a background character until now and in the story that kind of makes sense since he's being used as a pawn for Derek but he's beginning to piece things together a bit more and I enjoyed getting some of his troubled history with his father and it explored the drive of why he wants to be the new Batman and the vengeance he seeks on Bruce. Murphy and Dave Stewart's artwork continues to be a huge boon for the book and while the issue was lacking the action of the previous issues, I loved how the artist used page space to tell Terry's story about his father, especially the page depicting him within the red of the Batman Beyond suit symbol above his father's grave. It's just really cool and interesting panelling. The new design for the Beyond Batmobile from the animated series was great and it was so cool seeing that red cockpit light again that we'd seen in the animated series and how it cast the dark shadows over everything, it was just so aesthetically pleasing. Batman Beyond the White Knight issue 4 was another plot heavy issue that broke open a lot of the characters current arcs and even alluded to some pretty big things happening in the later issues of the series in terms of the series stories and scope. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Batman Beyond the White Knight issue 4 finds a group of men in a bar ranting about Bruce Wayne never being their saviour, or even a real Wayne for that matter, and Azrael was the real saviour. Jackie Napier says that Gotham wasn't made by Batman or Azrael or anyone else, it was made by Joker. The men get upset with Jackie, telling her that if she wanted to be part of something meaningful, she should join the Azraels. Jackie glasses one of the men with her beer bottle and is beaten down by the other as the GTO arrive, with Officer Flint telling them that the girl is Jackie. Jack Napier's daughter. Flint tases the men and the bartender demands his reward for finding Jackie and reporting her whereabouts but Flint says that his reward is he doesn't get arrested for serving a minor alcohol. Jackie is taken out to Derek Powers who is given Jackie's scrambler by Flint. Powers knows that this is how she evaded their facial recognition softwares, impressed with the girl's invention. He knows that if she really wanted to be like her father, she needs to be smarter. Jackie doesn't think that he knows anything about her father, but Powers thinks that he knows everything since he helped capture Batman by providing the tools to do so, and in a way, Jack and the other criminals helped build his company. Powers wonders whom she sees as her father, Jack or Joker, but Jackie barely knew both of them knowing that this is an opportunity for Powers since he isn't taking her to the police station and the fact that she hacked into his systems to evade detection makes her valuable to him and Powers wants her to use her abilities to find Bruce Wayne. Powers doesn't deny it and he tells her the best way to help is to learn about Joker's obsession with Batman. Jackie is taken inside Powers' building as Derek goes to meet with Terry who tells him that Bruce knows that they are working together. Derek knows that he doesn't have proof though and he's surprised to learn that Robin turned up to rescue Bruce as Terry tells him that he can't do this anymore and it's only a matter of time before Batman comes back. Derek reminds him that he is Batman now and he's come too far to back out now, wanting Terry to finish his father's work and in order to do that, he thinks it's time that Terry learned about the truth about what they are doing there. Bruce meanwhile awakens, demanding Duke take off the Robin costume but Barbara tells him that he was lucky Duke was there to save his life and the city loved seeing Batman and Robin in action again. 
Bruce reminds them that Batman is finished and it all needs to stop, but Barb tells him Batman is bigger than him and he needs to accept that fact. He tells Duke to take off the costume again, but Duke refuses to since he's under orders, making Bruce realize he's working for Barbara. Barbara tells him that the city is in trouble and they need Batman, and Batman needs a Robin. She reveals that two days ago she arrested Bruce and had no choice since it was public and she told reporters that Bruce later overpowered the guards and escaped. She sarcastically hopes that Bruce can forgive her for being a cop who breaks the rules as Bruce suits up. He tries to ask about Dick, wanting to know what happened between him and Barbara, and Barbara reveals that she proposed to Dick, getting tired of waiting for him to realize how much of a cat she was, but it didn't work out in the end and it's even more complicated than that since they now have a son together, something which shocks Bruce. She tells Bruce that if anyone in the city understood how police work affected family life, she expected it would be her. Bruce remembers how Jim always said that, but Barbara turned out alright. Barbara is glad, but if Bruce is eager to make peace, he needs to do it with Dick. Bruce knows that Dick is too far gone, but Barbara knows that he just wants Bruce's approval, the same as always, and they just need to have a massive heart-to-heart -heart talk. Bruce doesn't think that this is his speciality, but Barb thinks that Bruce's time in jail might have given him some time to reflect and grow as a person, and maybe he he is now capable of letting people in. Bruce, however, disappears from the room, frustrating Barbara, who asks Duke about the other Batman and his talk of Warren McGuinness, wanting to look into it while Robin hits the streets. Barb becomes more frustrated when she realizes Robin has also disappeared on her as well, wondering how her father ever put up with it for so long. Derek, meanwhile, tells Terry that he doesn't need to worry about Bruce since he has no vision of the future, and while his Batman was only protecting Gotham, Terry will protect the entire planet. Terry remembers how Derek told him Bruce hired someone to kill his father, but why would Bruce do that if he spent his entire life fighting against crime? Derek thinks that the answers will lie through the door ahead, telling Terry to get ready for his world to change. Derek introduces Terry to the project, the thing his father was working on before his death, as he is shown a huge facility filled with bat wings, tanks, and soldiers. Derek knows that thanks to Terry retrieving the Beyond suit, they have made some improvements to their soldiers, and each is now ten times stronger than Batman, and they all work in unison. Derek reveals that he wishes to sell this technology not just to their military, but the world's militaries, and they don't have a choice in the matter, since he shows Terry the footage that cost his father his life, telling him that they are going to be invaded and he is trying to protect them from annihilation. Duke meanwhile finds it ironic his name is now Robin since that's what his nickname in the army was as he was the best backup anyone on his team ever had and most of his team were Batman fans. Barbara thinks that this was his calling then as she finds info on Warren McGuinness, finding that he was murdered a few months ago and he was an engineer working for Derek Powers. Robin wonders if she thinks that Powers had him killed but Barb thinks it's possible, finding a report that was filed by Officer Flint from the GTO, knowing that that's Dick's second in command. Duke takes off to find Flint and Dick as Bruce meanwhile gets ready to abseil down into the old Batcave. He soon slips and ends up crashing down onto the ground as Jack knows that it was just another panic attack, wanting him to get up and walk off some of the nervous energy he has. Bruce refuses to talk about his feelings with Jack as he continues down into the cave, but Jack knows sooner or later he's going to have to talk about what is triggering him as they find a flying Batmobile prototype that Bruce never got working. Working. He knows the problem was the field propulsion unit, but with the battery he stole from Dick's GTO suit, he could probably get it running again. Jack suddenly senses some movement behind them as a black dog confronts Bruce. Bruce feeds him some food from his utility belt as Jack thinks that he must have wandered in after the cave collapsed. Bruce thinks that it will be nice having some company while he gets to work on the Batmobile, as Robin meanwhile sneaks into the GTO offices, downloading Flint's personal hard drive. Barbara gets to work combing through it to look for information on Warren as Robin is confronted by Dick on the roof as he tries to escape, surprised since he hasn't seen that old Robin suit for a while. Dick is still surprised that it even fits Duke, knowing Barb is in his ear, thinking that she was against vigilantism. Dick knows that if they needed something from the GTO, they could have just asked, but Duke thinks that would be difficult considering who he's aligned with. Dick pulls his gun, saying Powers has nothing to do with the new Batman, and Bruce is just an angry old man and he's confused, wanting to know where he is so he doesn't have to arrest Duke. Duke pulls out his staff, deflecting a bullet Dick fires back at him as he assaults him with the staff, tasering him with it. 
Robin manages to sweep Dick's legs out from under him, knowing that it's twice in a row he's now kicked his ass, wondering if he's getting soft by sitting behind a desk. Robin escapes the roof, wondering what the hell happened to the Nightwing they all loved and remembered. Jack, meanwhile, is bored sitting around the cave while Bruce fixes the Batmobile, finding it all depressing and he wishes he could have seen it back in the day. Bruce sarcastically says it's a good thing Joker never saw the secret base he has filled with weapons, but Jack is only glad that Bruce is finally referring to Joker as a separate person to him. Bruce knows when Joker first appeared, he told him a joke about playing cards where he literally was the Joker and it made him skeptical about that actually being his name. Jack knows that he loves making an entrance, really hoping he can do something that helps speed up everything with the Batmobile but he decides he'll give the dog a name, asking Bruce what he thinks about the name Bat-Hound, making Bruce lament about how he wants to use the screwdriver he has in his hand to give himself a lobotomy. Terry, meanwhile, meets with his mother at his father's grave, and she knows that her son is hiding something inside of him, wanting him to talk to her. Terry says that he saw his father's office recently, and Powers gave him a picture of them all together. Mary is worried that Terry isn't letting himself be a kid since he went straight to work for Powers, but Terry thinks that being a child is what drove his father father away after he moved out, and he thought that he would be able to fix everything by spending more time with him and hanging out at his father's place. But he was never there, so Terry began hanging out with all the latchkey kids, tagging buildings and road signs, and it all led to him getting kicked off the wrestling team, as well as him getting into a fight with an Azrael at his school. Warren soon found out about it and berated Terry, telling him that it was his fault he and Mary separated. Mary tells Terry that Warren was wrong in saying that, and he was just angry and lashing out. Terry, though, reveals the next night the Azraels tried to jump him, and he fought the same kid he fought the day before, but this time he didn't stop beating him, beating him until the Azrael was almost dead, before the cops arrested Terry. Warren again picked his son up from lockup, but this time he didn't yell at him, instead apologising for the day before, and he told Terry it wasn't his fault he split from Mary. Terry thought that it was as if Warren knew something bad was going to happen to him and then a few hours later, Warren was dead. Mary asks why he didn't say something sooner so Terry thinks it was because he was the last to see his father alive and he'll never forget what he said to him. Terry remembers his panicked father telling him that Derek Powers is insane and someone needs to stop him. Terry leaves the cemetery and his mother, telling her that he has some work to do as Bruce Mimol powers up the Batmobile and it begins flying. As Jack says that he gave the dog the name Ace, Bruce wants to know what is it with him and poker cards and Jack thinks that he's the Joker card, the best in the deck, and he figures the dog can be Ace, the second best card in the deck. Bruce tells Ace to hold on to something as he speeds out of the Batcave in the fully operational flying Batmobile. Jason Todd, meanwhile, leaves the prison, seeing the Batmobile fly into the sky overhead as he puts on his helmet, wondering what Bruce has gotten into as the Red Hood speeds off after Batman. Mm -hmm.